Hi, it's Kale the Planning Girl. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to share with you some half sheets that I own and some ideas on how to use them. And this video is a request by one of you, my viewers. And that's you, Angie. Hi, Angie. So I hope this helps you out and I hope it helps out anyone else who is watching today. So these are my half sheet collection. These half sheets all fit in a classic sized happy planner. Some half sheets are lined or are listed, such as these black and white dots and they're lined and I like them and that's the whole pack. This is from the happy planner girl line. These are glam girl and they're purple with pink dots that say hello gorgeous. And then there's also a pink one that is dot grid. Then there's these big ideas ones. That's a good one. My favorite, the lemon and lime ones, and they're lined. And I actually use this in a Squeeze the Day Skinny Classic. So that's why I bought myself a second. Um, probably my second favorite half sheet is this yellow notes with the banner. And on the back, there's a reminder. You saw me use this in my vacation planning series on day one for the half sheets. This one came in the pastel Joanne Happy Planner box. It was actually a Happy Planner box that was purchased at Joanne's. And I recently hauled it on a clearance video. This is kind of neat. It serves a specific purpose. So you have a list of items, a goal, a place to check things off some dot grid note to self, and on the back, take note, all dot grid. There's the glue that's left. I haven't used these yet. Here's one that's labeled Monday through Sunday, and they're color-coded blocks for a specific purpose. Again, on the back, same thing. This could be a cleaning schedule, your kid's sports schedule, um, meal planning, lots of good things here. Here's a weekly meal planner, definitely for meals. You also saw me use this one when I did my vacation series. And on the back is your grocery list. You can write it down and check it off as you purchase it. That's fabulous. You also saw me use this let's go travel sheet as well. So this serves a specific purpose. So let's talk about what could you use these planning sheets for? Well, I came up with some tracker ideas. And before I show you my tracker ideas, I'm gonna show you this. this. These are the rainbow expander discs, which I bought because I loved looking at them in the package. And then I decided I could put my half sheets on them and actually use them and not just stare at them in the package. I added a former Glam Girl. This is from the first Glam Girl planner line. This is a um, dashboard. And look, it's getting ready to be peeled. Did you know that there was cellophane on the back? Sometimes it's easy to find and it comes right off and other times it takes a couple of years and lots of uses before it comes right off. I usually don't fight to try to get it off. I just let it come off when it does. This is a good half sheet because it's actually a classic size sheet. It folds out and I used these last year in 2019 when I did my cleaning, spring cleaning schedule. So you can check out my channel, there's a video on that. Then from Miss Maker line, there's some washi half sheets and some scissor half sheets. And that's where I wrote my ideas, I think. Oh, where'd I put them? Oh, <laughs> very next page. There you go. So I'm going to talk a little bit through these ideas. And that way you can take a screenshot as well if you desire. So here's some different things that you could use to list out or track on these half sheets. And half sheets, that would work. Um, I'll share those with you. So these plain ones that you can list anything on, just for listing. How about the donations that you make each month to your various charities? or maybe weekly or seasonal or yearly? What about taking an inventory of your jewelry or your clothes, especially kids' clothes? You could even divide something like this up into seasons or have each column or row for your kids. You can hold it this way as well. 
and you can write down as the seasons change what you need to purchase. If they need shorts that year, that season or new socks or sneakers, your before school clothing shopping list, that kind of thing. What about a gifts list? Again, you could take something like this and assign each family member a row or just get a plain one and do the same thing. Maybe one person gets the front and someone else gets the back. Divide them up as you want or need to. Gifts list for holidays like Christmas or birthdays or even weddings. And maybe you're planning your own big event like a wedding, a birthday, an anniversary, a retirement. Keep track of who are RSVP'd, who's getting the chicken, who's getting the fish, who's getting the beef, who has an allergy, who has RSVP'd, who has not, that kind of thing. What about a list of day trips? Now's the time to start planning them. We're all home. We're getting antsy. Get out your maps. Get out your guidebooks. Get out the internet. <laughs> Just talk with your family and your friends and decide what can you do even in your own area once things start opening up. What parks will you visit? What hiking or biking routes do you go on? What golf courses? What yoga studios? What YMCA classes will you take? What dog walks will you take? What parks will you visit? Those kinds of things. And even places you wish to travel to, whether it is, um, like I know from my own area, in a day I can get to Buffalo, I can get to Erie, I can get to Niagara Falls, have a great time, have a meal out, and still get home um, all in one day. So start listing these things. What are you going to do when we're able to get out and about? What about things you want to try? Again, listing or categorizing in one of these perhaps. You can always cover these things. But um, what about restaurants that you would like to try? Or wines or beers that you would like to try? Or even the latest or different Starbucks drinks? Are you in a rut? I usually get a skinny cinnamon dolce latte, but I have tried plenty of things. Love the cold foam cold brew. Mm. And if it's salted cream cold foam, oh my my. I know one of the first places my husband and I will be going is Starbucks as soon as we can go someplace. So what are the kinds of a tracker idea? Maybe each week you will write down on one of these or create your own list from one of these blank ones. You know, how many miles you are riding, riding, excuse me, running or walking on that pair of sneakers. I know when my husband was training for marathons that he could only put so many miles on his shoes before he had to switch them out and he kept track. Um, what about essential oils that you use and their use? What are they for? Do they work for you? What about books you've read and reviewed, TV shows and movies that you've read or want to read and review? Again, they can be, you know, devoted one sheet for each of those items or a half a sheet. And I actually have a video on the TV and movie tracker that I've done. And I have a full size sheet on the books. And my husband took that sheet from me. And that's fine. He can have it because I actually keep track of my books in the sidebar. Okay, here's another one. What about websites, your favorite ones, the ones your kids should be using or ideas for your kids to use? What about your shopping websites? What about a list of your usernames and your passwords? What about your list of pantry staples? And then if you listed your pantry staples, say on something like this, or even if you actually used the meal planner and you just constantly kept... Um, this on your fridge, you could just, I don't know, check it as you needed it or put a magnet by it or highlight it or what have you. Maybe, you know, the first week you use it, you put a check mark by it. And the next week you use it, you highlight it or you use one each time. I don't know about you, but that's what we have now is time. And 60 of these come in. There's 52 weeks in a year. So essentially you could use one of these a year and not run out. So why not use one a week? Not one a year. I said one a year, didn't I? I meant one a week. Sorry. 
What about fridge staples? We always need milk. We always need half and half. We always need salad. We always need fresh broccoli. These are things I write on my grocery list every single week. And sometimes I don't even write them on the weekly grocery list. I just know when I'm in the store, that's what I grab. But you could get those ready. Or some of these things you might prepare on a half sheet and laminate it. What about favorite meals that you can rotate? What about a tracker for your plants? Again, you might take something like this and write in. Every Monday, for example, I water my house plants. And then of course, um, once the weather changes or maybe it has changed in your area, it looks like it's about to snow in mine. It's been cold and windy all day. Um, you could write down when you water your plants. I know that I like to use some food for my outdoor plants during the season, but I don't put the liquid food in their water every time I water them because that would be way too much. So you could keep track. What about um, weeding? Maybe you have large gardens and and you want to do your front flower beds on Monday and your back flower beds on Tuesday and your container gardens on Wednesday and your vegetable garden on Thursday. So make yourself a little system or tracker. What about pool or lawn care? Perhaps some folks have things that they need to do with those. I can't really speak to that because we just mow our grass and I don't have a pool. What about a weather tracker? That's something that I am going to start doing and I have been doing a little bit and I'll share that with you in a moment. Uh, COVID-19, what about the closures or which stores are still open and their new hours? I mean, in my area, it used to be if it were one o'clock in the morning and I was coming home from somewhere and I needed to stop in the Walmart, I could. That is no longer the case. In fact, I think it's closed at five o'clock now but I'm not 100% positive. See, I need to write that down. And as things start to reopen, someday soon, I hope, again, maybe their hours will be limited. So you'll wanna jot those things down. Then as I was writing this up, some other ideas came to mind and here's my extra ideas. What about um, an inventory of your pens, an inventory of your washi? You could even put samples of those on here. You could list all the colors that you have of your pilot juice pens. You could list all the colors that you have of your Unibos Ball Signo. You could list all of your Tombow pens. You could list all of your pens that are, what are those, the flares, the Peppermate, Papermate flares and write their colors down. What about washi? where you got them in case you want to repurchase. What was their name in case you need to repurchase? Um, what about perfumes or colognes or soaps or aftershaves? I know many of us have favorite scents, especially at stores like Bath and & Body. And when you go back for them, perhaps you forget what it was called or it was last year's summer scent. And now it's this year's summer and what the dickens was that called? Start keeping track of those now and have them for next time. What about an inventory of the sticker books you have or the planner supplies you have? What about inventorying your car maintenance? Maybe every time you do an oil change, you'll write down the date. And then once this is filled up, you know. Or when you change your wipers or how many miles, if, you're, if you travel for work, how many miles did you put on your car each day? Those kinds of things. So I'm gonna take this away now because you've had lots of time to look at it and hopefully freeze the frame. And I thought I would share with you a couple of things. But I went through and I started pulling out the weather tracking stickers because I want to do that for sure. Oftentimes I will write down in my gratitude journal that I was grateful that it was sunny that day or that the temperature was, you know, 50 or whatever. So I thought I might start using these in my classic or in one of my micros. Now, obviously this is gas, money, laundry, groceries, and maybe electric bill. But from here up, I've got windy, rainy, snowy. I guess that's thunderstorm, rainy, partly cloudy, and sunny. This sheet came out of journaling. This sheet came out of journaling doodles. And they're more doodly. And both sheets you could color. So this came out of journaling doodles. This sheet I thought I would use to track full Sundays. 
and maybe um, rainy days. And this sheet came out of Happy Illustrations. I thought I would do the same with this. For me, these rainbows signify rainy days or if there was a thunderstorm, for example, in the middle of, some, of the day in the summer. And that sheet came out of the horizontal. These two sheets, one is foiled and the other is not. These came out of the 100 sheet Joanne Happy Planner sticker book. And I especially love these two. These are my favorite. So if anyone from Happy Planner is listening, how about a weather tracker sticker book? And not so many boxes, although fill-in boxes would be nice, but plenty of pages of icons and some fun weather quotes would be good too. So I have these off to the side. So this would be something I would pull first and then I would get my um, planner. In this case, I'm thinking a micro notes and then journal about the weather every day. If you have young ones, especially elementary aged kiddos, and you are doing home learning and looking to supplement what you're getting from your child's school, or if you're not getting anything from your child's school, Weather tracking is a fantastic thing to do. It lets the kids be more aware of what is going on around them. And then you could even have them draw pictures if they're younger or if they're a little bit older elementary, they could write a full sentence using capital letters and proper punctuation about the weather and what it was like and track the temperatures. And you can do a little bit of math and some other activities with those. You know, what was the high? What was the low? What was the difference between yesterday and today? That kind of thing. What was the average temperature for the week? So that's kind of fun. The other thing I wanted to talk about was essential oils. Now, I don't know how you feel about essential oils. These are the four that I currently own. I own cypress and wintergreen. These were my first two. And then I've got the orange oil and the marjoram. And this company, Young Living, was recommended to me by my doctor. And I am not giving medical advice here at all on my channel. I am sharing with you my opinion and my successes. So I use these two oils and as does my husband because he actually is getting arthritis in his right hand because he scrolls and is on the computer all day and he's feeling it here in this joint. I actually have it here between these two um, from getting iron IVs for so many years and things are locking up right there. So one day at school, I was complaining about how it, it hurt so bad. I was rubbing my hand and the, my co-teacher at the time was like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, my arthritis hurts so bad. I can't stand it. She went to her room and got me this. She put one drop of cypress and one drop of wintergreen on and had me rub that in. And let me tell you, it was a couple of weeks before I had issue with that joint and that finger. The marjoram oil, I just recently got and I use this because post-injury to my spine, I still get muscle spasms in my left calf. And sometimes they keep me up. And I rub some marjoram oil into that. It stops it. And then I usually don't have them for a day or two after. So that's been fabulous. I bought the orange oil because I read that ingesting orange oil will help with your fight against cancer in that it what hooks itself to free radicals or something you'd need to google that and read it for yourself again I am not giving any kind of medical advice whatsoever but I've been drinking one drop of orange oil in my water bottle at school all of February and then into March until the COVID closure and then my orange oil was trapped at school until just the other day when I was able to go back in and pick it up. So now it is home. And honestly, I haven't been drinking the orange oil, but I did use it on a pimple on my face because I also read that this helps with acne. And I also read that it can help brighten your skin and help out with wrinkles. They say to add a drop to your favorite moisturizer in the morning. So I've done that once or twice as well. So I should write that up. Where would I write it? Well, how about taking something like this?
And instead of Monday through Saturday, Sunday, let's grab a box. I'm gonna take a box from journaling. And I do want it to be white, although you could grab a colored box. Um, I kind of want to cover the size of those letters. That's a little big. Maybe I won't have success. Maybe this one. Let's try this. And in it, I could letter orange oil. And the orange oil is good for a few things. You can drink one drop. You can add one drop to your moisturizer and put it on your face. And then acne. And I'm putting one dab because I basically got a Q-tip and let me show you what, this is kind of neat. They're not that you know, there's not a big hole there. There's like a little hole. So I just, oh, I can smell the orange. Too bad you don't have smell a vision. It smells like, well, an orange as you peel it. So I just would get a Q-tip and dip this onto the Q-tip. And that was that. Look, the lid's even turning orange. So you know that it's the real deal. It's cool. All right. So then get another one. have the marjoram. That's good for muscle spasms. And it may have other uses, but um, that's what I purchased it for. And again, you do your research, you decide. Here's another one, and I'm going to put them together. Wintergreen and Cypress, one drop each. And that helps arthritis. So as I try other oils, um, if I find them successful, I could add them. I could jot down ones I wanna try for, and that would work as just a, a little try. So I hope talking a little bit about half sheets and what kind of trackers you can create with them was helpful to you. Leave a comment below and let us know how you use your half sheets and if you would add anything to this list. Well, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.